Hello and welcome to the Bubble Lab. As a reminder, you should have opened the Bubble Virtual Bubble Lab assignment so you can follow along with the video. If you see the assignment open, you'll see the first question is, so why are we playing with bubbles? Well, we're going to compare the bilayer structure of a soap bubble to the bilayer structure of a cell's lipid bilayer plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is made up of a lipid bilayer. So we're going to compare that in soap. And we're going to look at um, how the behavior of a soap bilayer is similar and different to that of a lipid bilayer. I'll give you a second to read through the first paragraph. And after you do that, you'll have to pause the video. We're going to go over the structure of the soap molecule. So in that paragraph, it compares a soap molecule to a balloon. So imagine that the soap molecule has um, this balloon structure where the red part, the head, is hydrophilic, meaning that it, it likes to stay close to water, and the string or tail is hydrophobic, meaning that it stays away from water. If you look at the picture to the right, you'll notice that there's a bunch of small balloon-like structures, two of them, and then there's water in between. So if we look at soap, from the outside to the inside, this bubble bilayer is air, water, air. See how the tails are on the outside? The heads, which like water, are on the inside. They're trapping the water inside. Well, what about lipids? Lipids are opposite. So if you look at the structure, all of the tails are in the inside, and all of the heads are on the outside. So it makes sense that water is on the outside, and from outside to inside, it goes water. Instead of air, it's actually called cellular fluid, and then water again. They both trap materials inside because of this lipid bilayer. So what is the challenge here? Well, I have this big bowl of soap here. And I've got the straw square, which is going to be like my membrane. So I'm going to try and show you that this has soap on it. Try and catch the light somehow. You really get it on there. There we go. And my first challenge is to show you how flexible it is. So it says to kind of bounce it so that you can see it has some flexibility, right? Like a trampoline up until a certain point, it broke. So it's very hard to break. It is possible, but it's hard because it's pretty flexible. The next challenge here is called self-repairing. So I'm gonna do the same thing, lift up my bubble square. First, I'm gonna dip my finger into the soap and then show you that Here's the bubble screen, you can see. Oh, I just popped it just by doing nothing. And if I put my finger through it, does it break? Go ahead, take a second to record your observations and answers before moving on to the next one. All right, for this next challenge, we're gonna be looking at comparing this soap mixture and what I'm about to do to membrane-bound organelles. So I'm going to try and blow a big bubble and then blow a smaller bubble inside the bigger one. All right, here we go. For this next challenge, and it is a challenge, um, I changed it up a little bit because we're forever adapting in science. 
because my loop was not working. So I made a smaller square that I put inside the bigger square. Lift it up just a little bit. There we go. So all of it is dipped in bubbles so you can see the membrane is there. But I will try to poke the center, the yellow square, that's inside the bigger square, and we'll see what happens. So I've popped the yellow squares bubble, but you can see there's still a bubble layer around it in the red square. So this is kind of like a plasma membrane channel protein. It allows bigger molecules to go through without damaging the plasma membrane. And then what it will happen is it'll just regroup and reform that wall. All right, bubble challenge number five. This one's tricky. So I'm gonna use the strata blow bubble. This time I'm gonna slowly pull away so that a bridge or a, a junction forms. So here we go. Get that a little bit closer. Alrighty, now that my cat is making himself very present in this video, get this over here. Okay, challenge number six. So I'm gonna try and blow another bubble the size of an apple. Oh boy. And then use a string, soak it up, and attempt to split the bubble. Okay. <sighs> about as big as I can probably get it. I'm going to soak the string in soap and we'll see if I can split this bubble. Ooh, it's running away. All right, let's try it again. They don't call it a challenge for nothing. Well, that's a good one. That's getting even bigger. We'll see if I can get a good visual. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'll try doing a smaller one. Let's see if I can split this one. Wow, I'm not doing so hot. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can split this. Fast up. All right, how much time do I have? Oh, we're at nine minutes. We'll give it one more try. <laughs> okay, I think I'll give that a little bit of a stir. Let's see. I think once it connects to the wall, that's what's really causing the problem. Maybe if I do a smaller one before it gets to the wall. All right. Well, I failed. If you try this, maybe you succeed in this challenge. You don't have to. But the question says, did it split into two bubbles? For our purposes, no, it did not. <laughs> so my example didn't represent binary fission, but maybe if the conditions were different, if my string was different, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's supposed to split into two.
So the conclusion questions. Number 14, how are the bubbles in the plasma membranes of the cells structurally related? Hint, trapped. Remember what we talked about at the beginning of this video. Go ahead and rewind it or go to the first, rewind it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's not a tape. You can't rewind it. Go ahead and click on like minute one of this video to get a picture and a more explanation of how they're similar. Number 15, give an example from the lab of something important that plasma membrane does for the cell. Pick something, one of the challenges that um, you thought would be an important characteristic for a cell to have. And that's it.